This video is sponsored by Land og Tövrar, but more on that later. Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Jon and tonight we are painting some sort of troll outrider mounted on a wolf type thing. It'll be fun. So the guys at Lando Tövra, an Icelandic uh, 3D printing company, uh, got in touch with me and asked me if I was willing to paint another one of their figures. And of course, being the greedy little bastard I am, I wholeheartedly said yes. And that's where we are now. I have this troll outrider thing on a wolf, looks kind of neat. And they wanted it painted up in a fashion similar to Warcraft. Now, I have taken a long break from Warcraft and WoW because of, well, reasons. But this is not official product, so I think we're on the grey territory where it's okay. So, let's just start on this mounted troll thing. Uh, this video is going to be a little bit different, mainly because I'm not going uh, over it too much how I'm painting it up. The colors are coming up here and I will go over them a little bit while I'm doing it. But I th did this more in the natural way I paint models. I'm mixing colors, I'm jumping back and forth. So in this video you're seeing a lot more of my more natural process. So there's not much demonstration going on. I started uh, by putting a light uh, grey contrast paint over the wolf and now I'm wet blending different shades of blue onto the actual troll. I'm using a light blue, a verdigris color and a darker blue, a turquoise color and I'm mixing a little bit of black and white into them as well to get those different shadows and different highlights. And uh, well, the brief from the uh, sponsor was to have this in a sort of Warcrafty type style. So I'm going for a blue troll with a red hair and kind of jungle theme to him. And then he's on a frost wolf, sort of orky frost wolf. But hey, it'll look okay, I think. And after I put down those wet blended base coats, I just start highlighting putting a different shade of blue here and there, always in thin layers and adding a little bit more and more, getting it a little bit brighter, getting a little bit more contrast going to the skin. And most of the time just hoping it'll turn out okay, which eventually it did up to a point. It's different uh, color than I would usually paint these bright, bright blue skins. I'm not much into the really weird colored skins coming from a guy who plays Z plays Zinch characters and likes to paint those that sounds maybe a little bit off but as you can see with always a little bit lighter color here and there keeping the darker colors in the shadows it'll look okay and then just to get a little bit more definition into those shadows I'm using the Dragon of Nightshade I got it a little bit thinned out so it's not too thick so it wasn't so it won't look like I'm painting it on, even though I am. It'll look more natural, a little bit more depthy and a little bit more tones to the skin, which is nice. And while we're putting the shadows in, let's talk a little bit about, about Land O Tavrar, the sponsor for this uh, week's video. Now, they are a 3D printing company here in Iceland, and I've worked with them before. They make interesting models and... Their page will be linked in the description of the video. I highly re recommend checking them out. They can print everything from regular models that you might have, some STL files or something from HeroForge. And also they are making their own cu customized models like this guy and the Mimic in uh, this video that's linked now. And like you see, I'm putting a little bit more shadow here and there. And it looks okay. And then for the wolf, we're going simple. We're just dry brushing different uh, tones of light gray and white 
over the fur. It's a really, really interesting fur and contrast paint underneath. So why not just utilize the fact that it is perfect for dry brushing? Fur like this is perfect for dry brushing and always, if you get the chance, just a little bit of dry brushing here and there goes a long way. You can pick out some more afterwards with regular paints, but most of the time you really don't need it. Now, getting a little bit of war paint on this bad boy because, well, he's a Warcraft uh, troll and they have war paint on them. So a little bit of white war paint on the face and a little bit of shoulder. And it's okay if this actually looks a little bit chalky and not perfect. It's a war paint painted on a troll onto his own face. If he's doing it perfectly, why the hell is he running around with an axe? He could be a wonderful artist. But obviously this guy is uh, not the artistic type. Well, I'm guessing. And now for a little bit of the leather and the and the trimmings of everything, I'm going for a little bit more green here. And uh, for this I'm trying out uh, the new uh, paint set that a friend of mine gave me. Scale 75 Ink Tents ink tents inks they're quite interesting i thin them out a little bit just to get a little bit th uh, easier tone to them because they are quite powerful and uh, i'm just brushing it over the zenithal and you're getting the chalky undercoat of the zenithal as well as a little bit of color variation to the shade as well to the ink and that makes it looks a hell of a lot nicer and now we're uh, going over the inks a little bit more, adding a little bit of more color here and there, getting, uh, leaving the shades darker so everything looks uh, still on the natural side, a little bit on the edges. We don't want to go too much into the shadows with this ink because it will take out all the shadows. So instead of that, we're just putting in a little bit of brown wash into the shadows to get the color going a little bit darker and a little bit more rich, a little bit more natural. And there is a lot of texture to the both the vest he's wearing, let's call it a vest, and the saddle cloth. So feathering it out a little bit and getting a little bit of those uh, chalky zenithal underneath still into the color. And it looks really, really natural and looks really, really nice. Next step is to start on all the leather straps and his actual saddle, the wood on the axe and a little bit on the fur on the back of his shoulders. And we're just using a brown uh, contrast paint for that. No need to make it more difficult than it has to be. Just slap it on, try to keep it in frame while I'm moving my hand around. And then once it dry, I take a little bit of the intense brown ink and I'm just putting it into the middle of the leather, getting a little bit more texture, a little bit more depth to the leather and also in the recesses and dragging it across, getting a little bit more roughed up leather, getting it a little bit more interesting. That's the name of the game. For those bigger, flatter surfaces, you really have to put something down that'll make it look good and now for all the cloth bits i'm taking the in intense white ink i'm still trying out those paints i like them i'm mixing that with a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh, bone white and some airbrush medium just to thin out a little bit more because the bone white can get a little bit weird and i'm just brushing it over it seeing what it will do and the actual color they came out looks a little bit like bandages, a little bit of like old parchment, old white cloth that's dried up a little bit. I like it. It's a fun little thing to do. And then I'm still using that uh, ink mixture with the bone white and with the intense brown ink. And I'm brushing that over the fur on his shoulders just to get some interesting colors going on those uh, shoulder furs. Then a little bit later on, we'll add some more inks to it, a little bit more shade to it, and then dry brush it up a little bit. 
like you can see I'm starting to put down some more inks into the crevices and underneath them and into the shoulders getting a little bit more texture going through the fur and it looks nice and then of course jumping from one thing to the other I start highlighting the green a little bit getting a little bit popping those uh, highlights a little bit not too much I'm using thin color to keep the interesting undertone I talked about earlier but just a little bit on the higher recess or higher edges a little bit edge highlighting not really though but a little bit of it and then jumping again into the bracers like I said I'm painting this in the method I usually paint it tends to evolve around looking at the model regularly seeing oh there could be interesting or this could be fun to do why not try that there's a lot of trial and error but you get a better feel of what you're doing and now I'm working on my way and putting a little bit more ink into the shoulder fur same ink I used into the crevices of those arm wrap wrapping bracer things and also putting it around the belt uh, buckles that are on his actual chest piece cloth now here I made a little bit of a mistake I put a uh, a little bit of uh, wash on the actual uh, loincloth that I was not happy with. It was a little bit too shiny this was, so most of the stuff I do on the loincloth after this is trying to dampen down the shine and in the end I put a little bit, uh, a little layer of Lamia medium over it and that took a little bit of the shine away. But again, a little bit more edge highlighting. It's getting dry, the paint that was before, so now it's time for another one. And getting some scratch marks on it as well, just to give a little bit of extra wear and tear to the armor, if you can call it an armor. And adding a little bit to the layers of the flat surfaces so they look a little bit more interesting. And just a hint of edge here and there. And again, a little bit of scratches here and there, a little bit lighter color now. And this will dry a hell of a lot lighter. This is quite thin, so it looks really, really stark when you first put it on. But later on, it looks better. And again, this is bone white mixed with the white ink. And a little bit of uh, airbrush thinner. And just slightly highlighting the top of all the lighter colors just to get some more interest to the uh, cloth bits getting a little bit more depth to the white bits and it looks decent enough we will be touching on this part again like I do with most part of it because I'm going back and forth like I said jumping in here jumping in there doing whatever and after I realized how horrible the shiny of the loincloth was, I started to layer in some more colors to it, getting in a little bit more interest to it because it was just shiny brown. It looked like really, really oiled leather and it wasn't really working for him. And now just a stab of bone white with a matte uh, white color into it, dry brushing over and then picking out some spots with a lighter color and then picking out the same color I'm using the same color here on the leather straps just to get a really crisp highlight on them and also doing a little bit more scratches onto it just to get it a little bit more interesting now I'm using undiluted bone white and this is for the claws and the talons and the nails and all the teeth and we're painting it all up in a similar fashion We'll be adding a little bit more white later on to the teeth just to get them a little bit shinier than the actual claws and talons and nails and stuff like that. Just to differentiate between the two things. But it is the same painting process in general for those two, three, four things. And now we're just uh, starting on the hair. And like I said, bright red hair with a little bit of an orange highlight. We're going for a Warcrafty troll. So it's bright red for the beard and bright red for the hair. And while it's a little bit red, a little bit wet, I'm adding in some orange highlights. And then afterwards, 
plopping in a little bit of shade into those dreadlocks on his hair. And then his hair is basically done. It's a simple paint job to do the hair. And none of this is complex in general. Of course, there are some methods that you only lear really learn by doing them over and over again. But that's just fine. And then he's got a pink uh, thing in his mouth. And we missed that because that was out of frame. Because I'm doing it really haphazardly and not always checking where the frame is. A little bit of uh, skeletal horde, which I love as a contrast paint over all the claws and the teeth and everything. And of a lupus pink into the mouth just to get a little bit of extra look to all the tongue and the gum and the gullet and everything. And once the skeletal horde dries, we start putting in some highlights of bone white first and then adding in a little bit of white to the bone white and then in the end highlighting with just pure white over it and as I said before a little bit more highlight on the teeth than the claws just to get a little bit more toothy look to well his teeth and as you can see his uh, the troll's teeth are quite a lot lighter than the wolf's teeth but however the wolf's teeth won't be showing that much in the end stages of this because the wolf will have blood in his mouth of course a little bit of white just on the tip of the claws to give the hint that they are really really dangerously sharp and of course on his horribly horribly pedicured hand hands well manicured hands and pedicured feet who really knows he could use just a chainsaw on those and a little bit more shine to those teeth and then the teeth and claws are basically done now for the eyes we're just doing it really simple painting in white in all the eyes both of the wolf and it's quite easy on the wolf he's got big eyes and on the troll which was quite difficult because you can barely see his eyes, they're so small. It's really squinting, it's a bright day or something. And then afterwards, a yellow contrast paint in the eyes of the troll, and a blue contrast paint in the eyes of the wolf. And a little bit, a little bit later on, we'll just pop some shade around that, and it'll give it a nice outline. I'm not too worried about pupils or irises or anything like that in this case. Just getting a little bit of color, and having no pupils just gives it a more magical look if you want. And like I said, a little bit of no oil just around the eyes. And you got your eyelashes basically done or framing of the eyes so they look a lot nicer. And you don't need much, like you see, just a little bit around and it covers it up. Well, that doesn't cover it up, just makes it look very nice and if you put too much you could just dry your brush dry your finger and dab it away and now for the weapon i'm not going for an mm this time around i was thinking about it but you know what this feels more natural to me so i'm going for true metallics and i'm using the vallejo silver air paint i love it it's so shiny it covers really well the only problem with it is it might be a little bit too shiny. You have to really dull it down if you want to get something dull out of it. And then gold bits here and there. And after all, the, well, he's got jewelry, of course. So gold on the jewelry, gold on himself. It's just a weapon that's silver. And then we're using null oil. And we're using two, three coats of null oil on the weapon. Just to get it a little bit more dull and a little bit more worn. Because... No fancy axe would have a handle like that. So thick globulates of null oil here and there. And of course you have to be careful that it doesn't pull because we just want to dull the silver down, not to make it disappear under some black blob. As you can see, it's getting a little bit more dull and a little bit more interesting. And now it's time for my favorite part, where we highlight all the metals. But keep the model really close to our face, so the overhead camera can't see anything that you're doing. Off-screen highlighting. It's a really 
meticulous method that I am quite the fan of, as you can have seen in this video. Ah oh, yes, of course, it's beautiful. And now a little bit of blood over that awesomely highlighted stuff that I did not show you how to do, or how I did. And drying it a little bit, getting a little bit more tacky. And this is just blood for the blood god, which is a fun little thing. And of course, a little bit of it into the mouth as well, which I put art code in also off screen because that's my jam. And then after this is all finished, we start taking a little bit of brown wash. It's basically uh, just the brown ink mixed with a little bit of uh, a flow improver and null oil. And we're just picking here and there where we feel like it could lead a little bit more definition. There's no method to this, just looking over the model and figuring out hmm, a little bit here, hmm, a little bit there, and just going through everything until you finally find that you are okay with the end result. And here we have him 3D printed in his uh, clear resin. It looked weird to begin with. After I put a little bit of primer on him, I could see better where I was going with him. And after all the painting and everything, I'm quite pleased with the end result. He is uh, interesting at least, and it was fun to do it in my old fashion, just putting paint down and jumping back and forth and doing whatever you like. Thank you very much for joining me here today. There are links in the description for all kinds of stuff, social media and various tidbits. You do with it what you will like and share and subscribe and howl it at the moon. But until next time, farewell.